What's up guys and welcome to the next episode of the crack -a pack series today We are opening up a pack of Ixalan. So actually a standard legal set uh, Something that you guys can hopefully take home and understand exactly what cards are in this because obviously we open up some very old sets on this uh, This series that some people actually haven't even seen yet. So with this we are going to try and pick our uh, Draft pick so we're gonna actually go through this like it would be our pack one pick one in a draft uh, limited tournament so Ideally, we'll be able to go through this and you guys can actually take this and use it uh, for your next draft if you're drafting Exelon. So we are going to skip over some cards like Frenzied Rapper, Raptor, excuse me, not Rapper, uh, is a 4-2 uh, for 3, which just isn't that great. It's very filler, so we'll skip over that. Uh, Pterodon, Pterodon Knight is a 3-3 three, three for 4. It has flying as long as you control the dinosaur. Definitely a little bit better. Flying is super, super strong, uh, so... As of now, that's definitely the pick. Uh, Queen Bay Soldier, a 2-2 two, two for 2. It's on curve, it's a bear, but it's not first pickable. Siren Lookout definitely puts this card out. Uh, so it is a 1-2 for 3. When it enters the battlefield, it does explore, and it does have flying. Uh, which definitely, the, the natural flying makes it so much better, in my opinion. Uh, Ravenous Dagger Tooth, it is a 3-2 three, for 3 with Enrage, and when it's dealt damage, you gain 2 life. This is definitely a good card to have maybe as a one of in a dinosaur uh, deck, sort of a go long dinosaur deck. So the green red variant more than likely um, is definitely a great card because it does give you a little bit of incidental life gain and a three, two for two is fine. Uh, unfortunately, it's not that great in terms of the dinosaur deck. They're just better options. And speaking of territorial hammer skull is a two, three for three. And when it attacks tap target creature and opponent controls, this is fantastic. Uh, it goes into the, uh, especially the red-white aggressive dinosaur deck. And so you're able to tap down creatures and hopefully have a favorable, favorable combat step most of the time. So I really like that. Um, Dire Fleet Interloper is a 2-2 for 4 with Menace and it explores when it enters the battlefield. Menace is great, especially in Limited. Uh, it makes it very difficult for the opponent to really effectively block it. Uh, that being said, I think at four there might be better options, so it's definitely not going to be first pick for me. Uh, Swashbuckling is a two cast enchantment. It, the target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains haste. Definitely a strong card, but um, I tend to avoid uh, enchant creatures uh, in a limited environment. It just doesn't seem like that's what you want to be doing. I'd rather just have more power out on board with another creature. Uh, Siren's Ruse. One in a blue for an instant. Exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If a pirate was exiled this way, draw a card. Uh, this is actually, as maybe a one of, is decent uh, in a pirate's, specifically a pirate's deck, because it gives you a little bit of protection against a removal spell. So you're able to play a strong pirate out there and then flicker it if they target it with a kill spell or something like that. And because it was a pirate, you actually get to replace this card in your hand with a new card. So definitely instances where I would play this. Uh, definitely not first pickable, though. Uh, Unknown Shores, I'm just going to skip over. Definitely not. Uh, Lookout's Dispersal is our first uncommon. It's an instant that costs one less to cast if you control a pirate. So it could be one in a blue. Uh, and counter target spell unless its controller pays four. Definitely a powerful card. Uh, definitely something that you want to pick if you've already got pirates, though. So not going to be a first pick for me. Uh, Grim Captain's Call. Two and a black for a sorcery. Return pirate tar a pirate card from your graveyard to your hand. Then do the same for a vi vampire, dinosaur, and merfolk. Not the kind of card I prefer to take. Uh, Bishop of the Bloodstain. Three, three, four, five. Uh, it is a vampire, which is worth noting. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses one life for each vampire you control. Definitely a huge bomb in the vampire deck. Uh, and Search for Azkanta, which is actually a great card. I don't know how great this is in Limited, though, to be honest. Maybe you guys can tell me. Uh, basically, this just gives you incidental value over the long term of the game, which is fantastic. That being said, I don't know if it's amazing, as amazing, I should say, in Limited, just because at 2, ideally, you want to be playing something with some board presence. Uh, that being said, though, in a blue deck, this does give you that incremental advantage. I would probably try it out, uh, but it might be a safer pick to pick the bishop 
Uh, so if you're going into the vampire deck, this definitely is the kind of card you would want to have. Uh, Search for Escanta is just good in most blue decks in my mind. So that kind of leaves you a little bit more open, which is part of what I would want to do in a first pick scenario. So Search is going to be my pick. Guys, let me know what your pick is. Uh, if you feel like I missed something, let me know in the comments section down below. But until the next time, I think I am going to get out of here. Make sure to leave a like or a comment down below if you enjoyed it. And make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our content. But with that, I will see you in the next episode, guys. Thank you.